Hello and welcome to the latest in the Under Center podcast series where your hosts take on their favorite teams and give you small bite side episodes of the teams as we go through the off season and following on into the regular season. Welcome to the Washington Commanders podcast on here on the Under Center podcast. Now, this is the first episode, and uh, given that it's the first episode of this series, we're going to have to come up with a name for this podcast. Luckily, our favorite franchise, the Washington Commanders, did go through a similar process themselves. And so, taking inspiration from that, we're going to do something a little bit similar here on this show. I'm going to pitch to you, week by week, show by show, different names that I feel like represent either the show, uh, the topic of the show, Washington Commanders in general, could be alternate names, podcast names, but it really fundamentally it doesn't matter because I'm going to take the same methodology that Washington used where you're going to hear a lot of names, you're going to have strong opinions one way or the other, probably negatively on all of these names. And in the end, I'm not going to listen to a single person we're going to choose a name that ultimately nobody is happy with, no one is inspired by, but hey, we might hopefully not insult anybody on the way. And really, at the end of the day, when you're naming your franchise and you're naming your podcast, minimally insulting is the lowest bar you got to clear. Washington managed to do it, so we're going to try and do it as well. This show is going to be called Command Center. I like Command Center. Follows along with the military team of the Washington Commanders. They like to say that quarterbacks need to have a command of the offense. See what I like, see what I did there. Also, that same quarterback, he's also under center. Also tying in with under center podcast. We've got layers on layers on layers of these names. So hopefully you like week one. Please do engage with this show in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it's going. Is there a topic you want me to cover? Do you want to tell me I'm wrong? I'm sure I will be. I'm a fly by the seat of the pants guy. There is no script on this show. I'm going to pick a topic. We're going to go through it. They might be a little bit haphazard, but hopefully you guys have strong opinions. You like my strong opinions. I'm going to be up front here. And say that I'm not always a stats guy. I like to use my eyeballs when it comes to this game of football that we all love. So I'm going to give you some of my own opinions. They won't always be backed up by fact. In fact, sometimes they'll be disproved by fact. But like any good pundit, I'll cherry pick what I need. I'll ignore everything else. And I'm just going to give you strong sound bites that you guys can either love or hate. But hey, let's start a conversation and we can engage from there. I thought... Given that the new season is going to start, the new league year starts in about five days, somewhere around March 15th, I believe, is the new league year. And given that we've just had a season where there was lots of ups and downs, a lot of difficulties here and there, a lot of bad news breaking around the Washington Commanders franchise, I thought I would pitch to the Commanders franchise, as I'm sure they're watching, uh, some do's and don'ts that I think we need to do coming into next season and we're going to kind of walk through them a little bit here have a look see where i think we can improve suggestions on things that we need to stay strong on in our concepts in our fundamentals and also where i think we need significant changes because there will be significant changes needed in this franchise last season isn't good enough the long drought of mediocrity that we've had to sit through isn't good enough and while the coaching staff is doing their best and we have had some changes, there's still a lot that needs to be done. So let's dive into it. Let's see how my do's and don'ts list for the Washington in the coming season breaks down. And we're going to start off with a positive. And here's what I think. I think do see what you have in Sam Hill. We have been absolutely mitered in the last few seasons with poor quarterback play below average quarterback play the coaching staff have had seen this guy train and play for the last year as a backup to to Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke they like them they've kept them around and I think it's worth seeing what you have he didn't cost very much his contract doesn't cost very much and you never know there's plenty of diamonds in the rough in the NFL 
Tom Brady was the 199th overall selection. I do, I think Sam Howell is the, is the next Tom Brady. I seriously doubt it. Not many of them come around very often. But the reality is you got to see what you have. There's no use going out and get another Carson Wentz type quarterback when you've got this talent sitting here. If he doesn't, if he, at the bare minimum, he survives, plays okay, has ups and downs as a first time starter, certainly will no matter what his standard of play I think it's worth trying. I would much rather take a chance on on a young guy with a lot to prove. And if it breaks it down and, and we end up with another year of mediocrity, what have you lost? Because the quarterback roster we've had for the last few seasons has not had that quality that, as Washington fans, we demand. And hopefully coming up in the next season with Sam Howell under center, I think it's something that can be done. Because we have a lot of good talent. We're starting to run the ball a little bit better. That's essential when you've got a rookie running back or a rookie quarterback, I beg your pardon. They're no longer to a rookie running back. We have a, a dual thread in the backfield. We've got two players that can handle the ball and that can catch the ball out of the backfield. That's essential. You need that safety blanket when you've got a young guy in a quarterback. Uh, tight ends are improving and the wide receiver core has improved. We finally drafted... I believe in Jahan Dotson, a counter punch to Terry McLaurin. I don't think he's going to take a lot of receptions off him, but he has proved last season that if you leave him open, if you want to go and double team Terry McLaurin, he's enough to cause you serious problems and score some touchdowns as well, which this team is starved of, quite honestly. So, look, I'm advocating certainly let's go and see what we have in Sam Howell. Let's start the season with this guy. Let's see how far we get. I personally hope he plays all season, regardless of what the level is. I think you need that. The young guys have to learn. They don't get a lot of game reps. Sometimes they don't even get a lot of practice reps. And so it's going to be difficult for him to hit the ground running. We need to have a little bit of patience. Let's give him a full season and see what shakes out there. Next up, don't get sucked in to the quarterback carousel. This is a counterpoint to the last point I just made. If you're not interested in Sam Hell, let's not go diving into this quarterback carousel that's happening around the league every single offseason. The reality is a lot of these guys are fool's gold. They don't fit into the new systems very well. They end up costing a lot more money than Sam Hell, as I already mentioned. And that can be very detrimental to the to the franchise we've already seen what happened with Carson Wentz he did not work out he cost a chunk of money he's already been cut at the time of this recording so really I think that's disappointing there's not a lot of value even Aaron Rodgers as a two-time back-to-back MVP in recent years he already has a Super Bowl to his name but he's getting up there I don't know if you can trust that every quarterback is going to be able to play as long and to a higher quality as Tom Brady. I love Aaron Rodgers. I personally like him as a quarterback. I'm just not sure if the overall investment is worth it for Washington right now. I think the roster is good, strong, building and young. I don't think it's a win now roster. I don't think there's enough well-paid veterans on the roster that can make sure that when you get a player like Aaron Rodgers in, that you can take advantage of it and go to the Super Bowl because ultimately... That's what we're all trying to do. The other two guys I have up here, obviously Derek Carr has now signed with the Saints. But either way, it's important to note that there's so much quarterback mediocrity out there. And it's what we saw with Carson Wentz. You don't want to dive into a big contract, have to fight with other teams, get get the price driven up only to end up with something that was no better than what we already had. I don't believe there's any quarterback out there right now with the exception of Lamar Jackson, and I think his contract is going to be prohibitive. I don't believe that the owner, Dan Schneider here, has enough money to back up a fully guaranteed gigantic contract, which is what Lamar Jackson is looking for. All these other guys, like I just said in my previous point, I'd much rather stick with Sam Howell. Why not? He's cheap. If he's successful, you already have him on a couple more years contract that's going to stay cheap. 
he can only grow he can only get better these guys there's so much tape on these guys out here we need to have a look at it and be really critical a lot of garbage yards a lot of garbage touchdowns we need a quarterback that's going to fit our system that can win so i'm not totally against bringing in a veteran quarterback but you got to make sure he's the right guy let's not get sucked into oh washington needs a quarterback so therefore we're gonna have to go and get one off the carousel this year i don't buy into that i don't think that's the way forward for this franchise next up eric the enemy absolutely do i implore you fit your offense and your offensive scheme to the talent that you have on the pitch. So often these offensive guys come with their philosophy and their schemes and they try to retrofit the players that they have into that. We've got some great talent on this offensive side of the ball, good wide receivers, above average tight end, above average running backs, then none of them might be top five in the league, but there's a lot of talent there that you can do a lot of diverse things if you build the scheme around the talent that you have. This offense is going to struggle to do something that's outside of its DNA, outside of its identity. And really, it's about being patient, integrating well your offensive philosophy with the players that you have and making modifications where needed. If you want to be a head coach, Eric Bieniemy, you got to get your system in and really make it shine with the players that you have. If you can show the NFL that with the, some of the question marks, that for some reason are still lingering over you since you've come from the Kansas City Chiefs. I think I'll put to bed a lot of those issues. I think there'll be a lot more head coaching jobs. And hopefully Washington can benefit of that on the offensive side of the ball. We need to score more points and we need to threaten other opposing defenses a lot more than we have in the past few seasons. Speaking of defenses do not keep doing the same thing as we've been doing the last few seasons jack del rio do not fit your defense to the players we have i think this is a big contrast from the offense i think we've got to go the opposite direction we need to be aggressive there are no bend but don't break defenses that get to the super bowl you have to be aggressive you have to be dynamic and you have to push your agenda you've got to really put pressure on the quarterback we have a stood defensive line here in at the washington commanders they should be applying pressure after pressure after pressure it doesn't matter if you can't get home let's go and bully the quarterback to see if he can stand up to our pressure not the other way around. I think we've got fine talent on the outside. If you think you need to go and spend money in the free agency to get top-notch cover, man coverage veterans, then let's go do that because that's what a good team means. The back end will look so much better if you release the front end more. So often over the last few seasons, we have played soft coverage in key critical third downs and Week on week, it has bitten us. And I just don't think that that model is going to work from now on. He's already in hot water from last season. He made comments that, that sparked head coach Ron Rivera to discipline him. I think the defense has somewhat underperformed, given, like I said, the talent that is there. And I think that fundamentally stems from an issue with defensive philosophy and not pushing the defense on the offense imposing on top it doesn't need to be a shut down run defense it needs to be a pressure filled defense it needs to be dynamic these fancy blitzes have to come in they work well they've been proven to work well and i think it's about time that washington gets its own defensive scheme that can bring a little bit of pressure and a little bit of something different to opposing offenses. And finally, do trust the draft process. I've said about getting in key veterans. I think also we can we can really improve this roster in the draft. But here's my philosophy, and not a lot of people might agree with this, but I think Washington, as the roster stands right now, is best served 
by taking the best available. Over the last few seasons, we've made some questionable draft picks, maybe some reaches, and I think that's because we felt extra pressure from media and fan bases to feel immediately holds that we have through the draft. And I don't think that's a philosophy that's going to work. I think it, you lose leverage if you want to trade your draft positions. And I think as well that there's no way to predict how some of these draft picks will slot into the scheme. I think whatever way that you ranked the overall talent of the roster, I think you take the guy at whatever spot we land on. I believe we're 16th uh, in the 16th pick of the first round. Take the best guy on the board. If someone wants to trade out, it means you don't. You can take that opportunity to build your draft picks, get out of the 16th position if someone needs to come up, and then fundamentally then you don't end up losing anything as wherever you land, you're still going to take the best available. I think that's within reason, obviously, a pick up or a pick down. We don't want to end up with four wide receivers or four tight ends or anything like that. But I think fundamentally now where the roster is, at the moment, I think Washington are going to be best served by just taking the best player available. That's where the talent lies. Trust your evaluations. You can never go wrong by having as much talent as possible. And I think there's already enough fundamental base level talent in this roster that can improve and that can play well next season, that there is no gaping hole that we need to reach to fill. I think stay calm, keep our composure, and just draft the best players that we have. I've stressed that over and over again, but that fundamentally is my draft philosophy. I do it every year in the fantasy on my end. It's the next guy up, the best guy up. I'll never regret taking the talent. And there's always back end. There's always advantages on the back end. If you get a guy, a surplus guy that has shown talent in the, in the preseason, in the workouts, Trades are always good. It's always good to have a bit of depth at every position. So they are, in the end, my takeaways for the Washington do's and don'ts of this coming season. Hopefully you guys agree. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. As I said, please hit us up in the comments on this on this video. Let me know what you agreed with, what you didn't agree with, where you think I went wrong, what you think we should talk about next season. Feel free to pitch podcast names and ideas at me i'll hopefully get to all of them please do like and subscribe on all our social media channels here at the under center podcast you'll find us on twitter at under center podcast instagram at under center podcast on youtube search under center podcast you'll find all our shows there and we're available in audio form across all of the streaming platforms spotify apple music wherever else you get your podcasts that's all from me this week. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great, great week. I will talk to you again next time.